What's up everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Demon Souls. Before we start the second level of the Tower of Lottery, I just want to point one quick thing out. If you listen to the background music, you notice that it's changed. And that's because once you've cleared three worlds out, the background music in the Nexus changes from the soft melodic track that it used to have into this more heavy oppressive organ track. So, as for the Tower of Latria Part 2, or 3-2, um, Latria has, by far, the most interesting enemy designs in the, in the whole game. And we saw some of that with the Cthulhu-inspired octopus-headed guards, and here we're gonna get introduced to two more of my favorite enemies in the whole game. Uh, in this level, we're also gonna get introduced to a new NPC along with the hardest boss in the game or at least one of them if not the hardest definitely the second hardest also if you listen very carefully you can hear something in the background it's a very distant sounding thudding you might only be able to hear that if you have headphones on. What that is... Oh, gargoyle. Gargoyle! Gargoyle! What that sound is, that thumping in the background, it is a gargantuan beating heart that may very well be powering the boss to this world. The final boss of the world, I should say but we will learn more about him in due time. Also, thank you for that sign, whoever left that. Someone left an overhead sign because that gargoyle. Sometimes he likes to get stuck on the pillar and just chill out. It's very kind of him. Not always though, sometimes he, uh, you run too far forward and he just swoops in, takes a shot at you. Also, I wanna have my bow equipped because the gargoyles have a tendency to fly around and that's kind of annoying. This is not a crossbow one. I thought it was, by the way, it flew forward into the bonfire here. So there are two varieties of gargoyle. There are the spear-wielding ones, and then there are the way more annoying crossbow ones, who once you approach them, they just fly away, take to the air, and try to shoot you in the back. And they can be a little annoying to target down, and if you don't have any ranged options, you usually just have to run past them. The thing about the gargoyles is, though, you can just run past all of them. Almost all of them. I don't think there's a single gargoyle that you have to fight. I mean, most of the enemies in the game are like that. You don't actually have to fight all of that many enemies just to make it to the bosses. The gargoyles tend to be especially easy to avoid if you know your way around and you're not stopping for anything. But since they fly, you run the risk of a lot of them catching up to you. If you pause or if you search around to explore an area for hidden items, you can sometimes get mobbed by them. So, mostly just gonna be taking the gargoyles out. The way you wanna go to progress through the level is the opposite way around this semicircle that I'm going here. I just wanna make sure I'm not missing any items. Break the last two. Oh, and I wasn't, I was gonna miss something if I had left those two pots unmolested. That's what I do on this channel. I molest pots. Some might say that I am the number one pot molester on YouTube. What's this? Another hero soul. Not a big deal. Don't care about the souls. Not in it for the money, guys. God, my character's such a sellout. He's just in it for the souls. That might be the voice I, re I revert to most often. My my alternate persona, persona that I go to most frequently throughout these playthroughs. I'm really looking for a good excuse to bring back Hipster Necromorph. <laughs> Even though he has no reason to be in the Demon Souls playthrough. Oh, Hipster Necromorph is the best Necromorph. He's he's a little underground though. You know, he's, he's from a playthrough that you might not have heard of. 
hell is this item? Or souls! Uh, this level in particular, just like how 2-2 uh, kind of throws a lot of souls, or a lot of crystal lizards at you, this level set, uh, throws a lot of souls at you. What I just thrust the dragon longsword into was that giant, a part, a chamber of that giant beating heart that I was talking about. And our goal, since you saw the heart was blocking off one of our pathways there, our goal is to destroy a few chains in this level. There you can get a much better view of it. Our goal here is to destroy a few chains that are holding that heart up and preventing us from making progress in two different directions. One direction was the one I just showed you. The other one, if you continue climbing this flight of stairs and you keep to the right, you keep following the path around, uh, you'll find this long spiral staircase that leads upwards towards the boss, but since the heart is hoisted up in chains, we can't access the boss just yet. There are two sets of chains that we're gonna have to destroy to lower it in order to finish the level. This is a drop that you can make in order to get the rune sh sword and shield. I'm actually not sure which side you have to drop down to get to it. So I'm a little nervous about making this drop, but uh, I'm just gonna inch. I see the item glowing down there. Fuck it, let's go. I hate, I don't know if I've said it or if I've said it often enough for this to be drilled into your heads, I hate making those kinds of drops. There, we now have a set of rune sword, a matching pair of rune items, a rune sword and a rune shield that we could not get off of the Black Phantom Astrava's corpse because we stabbed him in the back and sent him plummeting off a ledge. And now this is the other drop that you can make in order to get back on track here. And it requires you just going back up the way you, we already came. So we go back down here. And I believe this is yeah, this is the way, right? Hey, another gargoyle! Oh, this is one, this one is a crossbow gargoyle. Isn't that right? Let's see if we can actually get a stab. Nope, can't get a stab off before he takes to the air. But what we can get is a shard of moonlight stone that I missed when I was down here. I don't know what all this webbing, this wiring is that's interconnecting all the spires in the upper part of Latria. Also, it's there's an interesting thing to note about the gargoyles here. Gargoyles, I think it's cool that gargoyles carry you up to the stage where you fight the man-eaters. Since the man-eaters of Dark Souls are gargoyles. There's a little cool parallel there. Oh, there's more stuff I missed down here. I'm kinda glad I came back down this way. God, and he fires so fast! Like, I didn't have enough time to loot the item and then close the window out before he got another shot off. Or are you guys just say you're like Mr. Derpy? I'll fucking shoot you. Yeah. Ow! Nope. Just had to get one last shot off before he died. That's how gargoyles work. Really hate the gargoyles. It's not even. Uh, it's not all of the gargoyles that I don't like fighting. It's just the crossbow ones. Such a pain in the ass. If I was on my other character, who is a royal, not a problem. But, since we do not have the best ranged capabilities, the archers are gonna continue to plague us a little bit. Not too much though, not too much, because there are only a couple of those in here. That's the second time I've run past the wing that was clipping through the doorway. Second time, I thought it was some kind of blade. Like it was some lowered guillotine axe or something. Makes me a little cautious to approach it. Especially Latria. Latria has like some of the deadliest traps. And they're not even... 
big elaborate ones either. They're just pitfalls. Really annoying pitfalls. So like I was saying, up that way is the path up to the boss. It's blocked by the heart, so we have to keep going this way. And from here, it's pretty straightforward. This whole level, for the most part, is actually pretty straightforward. There's not too much going on in it. It's, it's actually pretty difficult to get lost in here. The only thing that really contributes that to, to the possibility of you getting lost is that there's a kind of open swamp down below that if you make a wrong turn, you can kind of lose the way back onto the ramp. And aside from that, it's just really dark in this level. Oh, he was kind enough to come, uh... Stand around for me. I'm still not... I still didn't want to attack him with my sword because... As you can see, he is on a ledge. And I don't want to take any chances fighting anything that close to a ledge in this level. Because I can and will get pushed off. If something bad can happen, it will happen. That is the axiom for this game. If something bad can happen, it will happen. So just avoid it, and you'll be fine. I think that's another Spear Gargoyle, so we'll be fine killing him if he comes after us. Oh, he's just gonna land right in front of us. And they take a while to recover from landing, so you have a pretty good opening to just rip him up. Also, interesting to note, they always drop souls. They're, I think, the only enemies in the game that do that. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, say Epic Name Bro, who is something of a, a learned sage of the Souls games. He is a repository for knowledge and passion on the series. And he has a theory that the gargoyles were once soldiers who underwent some of the old monk who is the final boss of the area. They were soldiers who underwent some horrible experiments since they all drop soldiers' souls. Now we just have to wait for the elevator. And since we know that the Lotrians were very well learned well-researched people, and I believe on one of the archstones it even states that the old monk was doing some gruesome, nasty experiments on the, the prisoners. We can safely assume that he was attempting to hybridize people. And that, again, feeds into what the man-eaters might be, because one, we fight two of them and, well, I'll let you see by their design where that thought is going. But you also get the twin demon soul from them. Now we are going to lower the first chain by killing these depraved worshippers, or are they dragons? There's something. So it looks as though they are channeling soul power into this monument, and once we kill them and stop the channeling, we're going to see what that does. So now that we've stopped the prisoners from channeling souls souls into the heart, we're into the chain directly. The heart has lost a little bit of its support, and it's dropped just a little bit. We still have one more to go, though. If you come up here in pure white world tendency, this is where a little plank appears to get you across. You have to cross that plank in pure white world tendency in order to get the key that ties back to 3-1 in order to open uh, Lord Ridiel's cell. But of course we can't do that just yet. I think we at least have to kill man-eaters to hit pure white world tendency. We might also have to kill old monk. Should just be man-eaters. Uh, judging by the icon in the top right. Fresh spice! Just what I wanted. And in the distance, you can see the multicolored all jade of souls beckoning towards us. Oh shit, wait a minute. Oh fuck, this is the trap ledge. Oh, I've made a terrible mistake.
God, I've been... I've been sucking at remembering the traps recently. But it is a surprisingly forgiv or forgiving run back. Uh, that's only about two and a half minutes, maybe less, of running, if you know the way, and a chunk of that is just waiting for things like the elevators and the load screens. So when you see the Aldates of Souls in the distance, and you approach that ledge to drop down, just drop off to the left instead of going straight, and you'll be just fine. Are you here to fight the demons? If so, then help me escape this place. I am on your side. I have come to face the demons. Yeah, sure. That is Yurt, the Silent Chief, and he's a little more subtle than Loutrek, but still. Well, what have we here? Do you wish... Do I wish to what, Yurt? The reason I killed him was because if I let him out of the second level of the Tower of Latria alive, he will murder NPCs. And I won his armor, so I'm going to reload the profile and be right back. And just like when I killed Skurver, the Black Phantom Skurver, reload the profile, his corpse will be exactly where we left it. And yeah, that's uh, every... NPC that I've killed on camera so far has died the exact same way. That's how we do it. Quick and from behind. Uh-oh. Oh, damn it, everything is an innuendo. So, Yurt's armor is a little bit heavy. But it looks super cool. I'm gonna replace parts of it here. Just to get the weight down, because I always, always, always want to maintain that quick roll speed. There we go. So, killing Yur and stealing his armor isn't enough. We're gonna go all out in stealing his identity, including taking up his side mission. Or at least we can, anyway. So if you kill Yur and have pure black character tendency, Mephistopheles shows up in the Nexus, and it's revealed that she is aligned with something called the Order of the Soul, and she contacted Yurt to assassinate people with knowledge of the soul arts. And she gives you the option to carry out what Yurt began and assassinate key NPCs around the Nexus, including Patches, along with Yuria, Urbane, Frake, all of them. And you get a special ring as the final reward for doing Mephistopheles assassination quests. I don't know if I'm actually going to do that in this playthrough. One of the reasons being that I don't know if I feel like pushing my character tendency towards pure black. If I do, it'll be at the very, very end of the game. So not in the near future. I just, I killed Yurt, one, because I wanted his armor, two, because I don't want him going around killing all the NPCs that I want to buy stuff from, like spells, useful, useful spells, and miracles. So I mentioned that Latria is by far the most interesting monster designs in the game. Here in this swamp, we meet two more of them. Actually, no, we only meet one of them. Uh, one of them we saw again in the last level, it was the big ball of, of limbs. The other one I'm talking about are the Man Centipedes, another hybrid enemy. They're probably my favorite monster designs in the whole game. They are actual human centipedes with faces just protruding everywhere. I really like that motif, by the way. There's something that's just especially unsettling about all of the, uh, the unmoving faces just grafted together, it, it, seemingly at random all over the body. It's very macabre. Those were even, uh, those were even some of my favorite boss designs in Bayonetta. Like, uh, uh Justicia. Plus, we're also being introduced to them in this murky swamp of what looks like thick, congealed blood, with only the ambient sound of a bog and the thumping, gargantuan heart setting a rhythm in the background. It's one of the single most unnerving sections of the game, I love it. It is kind of dark though, like, not just tone-wise, it's the brightness, it's out of control how dark it is down here. 
And it's what makes it, it, it can make it a little unwieldy to navigate. Uh, the biggest piece of advice I can give you is if you go off the beaten path to do some exploring, find the wooden planks here and just trace around the edge to find the ramp back up. Once you're back on, it's no problem getting out of here. If you don't want to do any exploring, and you really don't have to, there's nothing super important down here. I, I think I found some marrow stone and some sucker stone. Not a too big of a deal. If you're not planning on doing any exploring, as soon as you take the cage elevator down here, you shouldn't have to go far before you see the ramp that you want to get onto in order to get out of here. And I lost my way a little bit. I have to find that ramp real quick. So I'm going to end the episode here while I'm searching that ramp out. And once I find it, we will uh, continue on with the end of 3-2, and I'll probably also finish up 3-3 in the next episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy. Have a good one.